It's back. It's the return of the stack. After four months, we finally have a fresh set of flight vehicles assembled on the orbital launch mount and ready to go. But that's not all. There's also a whole bunch of work going on at the production site. And I almost forgot, we flew this week. So we'll be taking a look at everything from the air. What's up, Star fans? I'm Jack Byer for NSF, and this is your Starship Update. Of course, a full stack has been assembled, but we'll touch on that in just a moment. Now, the first thing you pass by when you come to Starbase is the Sanchez site. Here, four ring-shaped structures have been built in the last few weeks and months. We covered this last week when one of the white ones was rolled out to the production site and moved inside the mega bay. Well, there's another one just like that being made here, as well as two bigger black rings, which have undergone quite a lot of progress since the last time we flew. While the other white ring might be for the same purpose as the first one, these two black ones are still quite a mystery, and frankly, it's hard to say what they might be for. Hopefully, one of these black rings rolls out soon so we can zoom in with our cameras and take detailed shots of them, and we'll hopefully be able to put all the pieces together. Next to the Sanchez site is the Rocket Garden, and you might notice some empty spots here. That's, of course, because we had two ships rolling out from here to the launch site. One of them is obviously Ship 25, which for the last month was being prepared for flight. It not only got its final thermal protection system tiles in the rocket garden and its spiffy livery, but it also got a host of other neat improvements. For example, it got an expansion of the space that is utilized for its flight termination system charges, which should ensure that it breaks up for good if this system were to be activated during the next flight of Starship. Obviously, we hope that doesn't happen, but it's good to be safe. More explosives, more better? Ship 25 also got a whole row of holes on its aft section, right above where the engine shields are located. The ship even has an extra couple of these holes on the port side. These could potentially be to purge the aft end of the ship during flight, similar to how we've seen new vents on the bottom of Booster 9 that we suspect are part of a system that purges the engine bay to avoid fires in that area. Apart from these holes, we can also see a new set of vents on the port and starboard side of the ship, which shows that something else will be vented from the aft section of the ship. Here at the Rapid Garden, we've also seen work continuing on Ship 28, which still stands on the engine installation stand and still has scaffolding on the leeward side. Ship 20 also got some work done to it this week, as a few workers went up to its nose cone section to tile over its lifting points. Now, that last part is pretty interesting, given that SpaceX typically does this when they're ready to fly a ship, and we certainly don't think Ship 20 is about to fly. Maybe they're just trying to make it look good for display? That said, last week I said Ship 26 was probably waiting around to be scrapped, and now it's at the launch site, so who knows? Anyway, this might be something else. Maybe Ship 20 is becoming a permanent display, and they're just trying to make it look good. Yep, it's another week, so it's another set of stairs that have been installed in the new Mega Bay. At the same time, SpaceX has been building out the roof of the new mega bay over the last couple of weeks. You can see in our flyover pictures, a huge section of the new roof is hooked up to the LR-11000 crane at the production site, and it's getting ready to be lifted. These pieces are also an integral part of the structure and where the new bridge cranes will be installed. And they're where the two new bridge cranes will be installed. With Mega Bay 2 construction nearing its end, buildup of new boosters continues full steam inside the first mega bay. Here, pieces for Booster 13 have already started to be stacked. I took this shot of its common dome section just before it went inside and was added to the stack. You can see not one, not two, not even three, but four vents on this side of the common dome section. On prior vehicles, this side had three vents, and now it seems like they've added a fourth one for Booster 13. Remember that white ring we saw rolled out last week and head over into the Mega Bay at the production site? Well, Sean and I spotted it in one of the corners of the Mega Bay while we were flying. It is sitting on tall legs, which means this ring is now elevated off the ground. While its purpose is still not completely clear, the theory that this might be for engine installation is gaining more and more traction the more time passes. It's a shame that it's so tucked away inside the Mega Bay, as it's absolutely a treat to shoot Raptors being installed on vehicles. It also looks like the Mega Bay is receiving some hardware on the sides of its entrance. It's still too early to tell, but this might be for some sort of doors to cover the opening. If so, this would be kind of a sad moment, as we won't be able to see inside of this bay anymore. And that there is the reason I say to enjoy the views while they last. Some of the views that we don't get to see anymore include things like ring construction, dome sleeving, and flipping. 
All of that's going to the Star Factory building. Since SpaceX had the production site humming along, it couldn't just flip a switch and demolish all the tents for a Star Factory expansion, so it has to be built in phases. Phase 1 started pretty much as an extra building north of Tent 3, which basically took over the duties of Tent 1 and Tent 2 in the first half of the year. Phase 2 of the Star Factory building started a few months ago and involved the huge expansion to the northeast. This included the demolition of the windbreak and the relocation of the ground fabrication building to the Sanchez site. This construction is now being closely followed by what we could call Phase 3, and it's going to go where the old Tent 1 and Tent 2 were located. If you've been following along for the last month or so, you might have seen that these two tents, along with the mid-bay, have been removed in order to make way for this third phase of the Star Factory building. Ground is now being broken for Phase 3, right where Tent 1 and Tent 2 were located, and we'll likely see preparation of the foundation of this side of the building in the following weeks and months. However, we might have to wait a bit more for that to happen, as Tent 3 is where SpaceX builds nose cone sections, which are larger than the barrels, rings, and domes that they were making in the other tents. This means that nose cones cannot fit inside of what's been built of the Star Factory. We think that the side of the Star Factory that will have nose cone construction will be the one closest to Highway 4, as this is where the roof is expected to be taller in order to fit the nose cones. As you can see in these shots, SpaceX is still not there yet, so give them a few more months to build that part of the building, and then expect Tent 3 to follow in the demolition process. I bet there's already some hardware inside that part of Phase 2 of the building, with how much of it's already been constructed. This week, we also saw the HLS nose cone mock-up being painted white. I guess that kind of makes it look more real? If only they hadn't also painted the lifting points, then it would have looked even more realistic, but oh well, just a bit of paint, no biggie. I'm now hopeful that just like the original HLS mock-up nose cone we saw at Starbase, this new one will get the NASA worm painted on it, because the worm is better than the meatball. Now let's finally move over here to the launch site, where we once again have a fully stacked Starship. Ship 25 rolled up to the launch site last Monday in the late evening. Everything appeared to be going fine, that is until one of the two SPMTs that were moving it down Highway 4 appeared to break down. Now, I could have turned around and left, but with Sean stuck at the launch site, and something we've never seen happen before, I opted to stay on the road, stuck behind Ship 25 for around two hours or so, seeing the SpaceX workers trying to get the thing to work again. Thankfully, they got a replacement part installed and the rollout was completed. Stacking then happened on Tuesday, and I have to say, seeing a full stack on the pad once again was truly amazing. We've got a bunch of new epic metal prints in the shop, including this insane one from Sean, and this aerial shot from myself. So head on over to shop.nasaspaceflight and snatch one up. And of course, while you're there, you can also grab our new commemorative embroidered patch for this second flight. This was designed by our own Pauline Acklin, and it's absolutely beautiful. You can also have this design in mugs, shirts, and even water bottles. You can check them out at shop.nasaspaceflight.com. Be sure to also check the items from the first flight of Starship marked under Last Chance, as these will be gone soon for obvious reasons. With the return of the stack, SpaceX is edging ever closer to the second flight of Starship. And even Elon said on Twitter that SpaceX is ready, pending regulatory approval. But are they really ready? Well, this week we saw teams removing one of the big pipes of the water deluge tank farm, and that was later replaced by another pipe later in the week. We don't know why they did this, but it could have been to upgrade this pipe, or maybe the previous one was damaged. Either way, there was still work to be done. Thankfully, it seems like Booster 9 engine work should have finished up as teams removed the dance floor platform from underneath the vehicle, so that's pretty encouraging. This week, we also saw the removal of the old CO2 tank at the launch site, which was being used for the fire suppression system on the booster. We assume that one of the new tanks near the water deluge tank farm is the one they're now using for CO2, as this is where the old one was located. Speaking of tank farms, we've also seen the addition of all remaining subcoolers on the methane and oxygen sides of the main orbital tank farm, compared to the last time we flew. These additional subcoolers, plus some extra pumps they're installing, will allow for the countdown to be shortened in the future and get Starship fueled much faster. Oh, and by the way, we also had more stairs being installed on the launch tower. Seems like these must have been the last stairs to be installed because now they pretty much reach all the way up to the QD arm on the tower. These are likely to be used in case the elevator breaks and they need to use the stairs. I certainly wouldn't want to be in that situation though. Well, actually, I wouldn't mind going up those stairs in particular given that they're on one of the coolest launch towers in the world. I could even bring a few cameras with me. Remember Ship 26? The one we thought was going to be skipped and scrapped and turned into little metal bits? Well, how do I say this? It's now at Suborbital Pad B and might be preparing to fly on Starship's third test flight. 
At the very least, it's there for static fire testing, as it does have its engines installed. It just goes to show that even when you think you know what SpaceX is up to, you probably don't. That's why in these videos we so often say that we don't know things. Either way, this time we were wrong. Can't be right 100% of the time, I suppose. In any case, Ship 26 rolled down Highway 4 and was lifted on suborbital Pad B on Thursday. One thing to also notice on the suborbital side of the launch site is the ongoing construction of a new concrete retaining wall. SpaceX has been trucking in dirt and working on building out this area for quite some time, and in the last week or two, this new wall has started to go up. It remains to be seen what happens here, but who knows? Maybe we'll end up getting some kind of expansion to the suborbital pads, or a new part of the tank farm here soon. So as you can see, a lot has happened in just the last week alone, and the anticipation for a flight two of Starship is becoming distinctly palpable. While Elon's ready might not be a 100% ready, it at least seems like things are really close to that. We also have this week the FAA saying that they've approved the mishap report on the first flight of Starship. And this is a major milestone. The FAA says that SpaceX has proposed a list of 63 corrective actions and that these need to be completed before SpaceX submits the launch license modification. Obviously, we've seen many of these potential corrective actions already implemented and SpaceX might be close to applying for that modification if they haven't done so already. For a full rundown on the whole FAA story, DOS has you covered on our latest video that we released yesterday on this topic. While we've seen the comeback of a Starship full stack, we don't expect this to be the final time both vehicles come together, as SpaceX will need to pull the safety pins on the flight termination system of both Ship 25 and Booster 9, and that requires de-stacking Ship 25. The same thing happened with Ship 24 and Booster 7, if you remember. In any case, stick around our channel as we all watch the future of spaceflight unfold before our eyes. That's going to be it for this week. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other.